Now the bottom of the uh, chest is going to be frame and panel as is the top. Uh, for the bottom I'm using 7 8 inch cherry about 2 and 8 inch uh, wide and we'll do some uh, open mortise and tenons, you know, some bridle joints on the corners and I'll then wrap it a, uh, a group, you know, make a rabbit around the bottom that I can uh, glue a piece of plywood in which would be the actual bottom of the piece. Then the, uh, the top will be also made the same way with a little bit smaller material and it'll house a piece of quarter inch glass. So I've cut the uh, cherry uh, a little bit oversized. Now I'm going to run it through my sander to get off any planer snipe, get these as uh, perfectly uh, flat as I can, and then we'll cut the uh, mortise and tenon joints. I'm going to be using a tenoning jig on my unisaw to cut the, uh, the mortises and the tenons, uh, but it helps uh, to go ahead and mark uh, the boards. I've taken my marker and set it to a quarter inch. What I'll end up with, and I've, got, I've already marked some of these, I'll end up with a, with a quarter inch mortise, a quarter inch tenon, and an opening. Uh, of a quarter inch on each, or a quarter inch on each side for the tops, a total of three quarters, and on the uh, on the on the bottom, you'll have a, 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 a an opening for the mortise that's that's thicker because this is seven eighths material, so uh, that opening is going to be uh, you know more like three eighths of an inch, uh, and that, the the reason I'm doing that it saves me a little time uh, in the setup of the tenoning jig and frankly uh, the, the, the difference in strength or well there's really it's inconsequential. Now I'm going to cut the tenons. I'm using my tenoning jig which is a nice cast iron uh, jig. I think it's a delta. It's an old one. And I've already set the blade to be the height of the you know how, how deep I have to cut. Actually I set it just a little bit low because later on I'm going to cross cut off the waist. So right now I've got my, my blade set to split the line that I scribed on the tenon cheek and then once that cut's done all I have to do is flip this board around and cut the other side because this fence is the reference. As a matter of fact that will also work for the thinner stock for the top. So we'll go ahead and cut this one see if we got it right on. I think we're pretty close. Looks like we just split the lines, so that's what we wanted. So we'll go ahead and cut the rest of them. One other thing I wanted to point out. I've got a piece of waste stock on the back here clamped to the fence to make sure that there's no blowout on the other side as the blade goes through. If you don't have some stock back there, as soon as the blade comes through, it's going to blow out a piece of your, uh, you know, chip out a big hunk of your wood, and you don't want that. Okay, now I'm going to cut the mortises. Now, I'm going to cut each side of the cheeks of the mortises and then later on I'll come through and just cut out that centerpiece and I'll have to do a little cleanup with the chisel. I've taken my spoiler board and turned it upside down so I have fresh, you know, uh, undisturbed wood for these new cuts. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut the one side, we'll flip the board around, cut the other side, do that to everything and then uh, We'll cut out that center section. Now I'm going to cut off the uh, 
uh, waste for the tenons. And to do that, I'm going to use a crosscut sled with a stop block that stops my wood at the right point so the blade can cut through. I've got this on end right now, but it will be flat in a minute. First, I put a, a block under here, clamp on my stop block, and then I remove this block. And the reason I did that was I don't want to trap this cutoff. So if I can leave some air under there, the cutoff will just fall away. I've got the blade set to the right height already. So we'll just go ahead and cut these off now. And now the, uh, you know, the saw leaves a little bit of a rough top because the, the, the tooth angle leaves these little ridges. So to clean that up is pretty simple. You just uh, Use a sharp chisel, go in here, just pare away the little ridges. Only go halfway and turn your wood around. So that you don't blow out the other side. And here's a dry fit up of the bottom. Now, I purposely made these pieces a sixteenth inch wider than they needed to be so that I'd have a little bit of the tenon sticking out here and on the other face I'd have the tenon recessed. That way when I clamp I'll get a nice good tight pull in of these parts. Same, same thing here when I clamp across here the tenon will pull in nicely and then I can just clamp also on the faces and that give me a nice tight joint. On the top, <clears throat> on the top, the tenons fit just a little tight, so I'm taking a uh, scraper here, just a cabinet scraper, and I'm just going to scrape off just a little bit. Just to pare down that tenon just a hair. Now it's time to glue the frames together. I've marked where each frame goes, and so first step is brush on some glue. Make sure to get glue on all the surfaces. Then I assemble the frame, being careful to make sure that I have matching corners already marked. Then I come over to the clamping table where I've already set up my clamps. I'm using these uh, blocks that Bessie makes that will hold the clamps up, especially for this application. Bring up the clamps gently. You notice my clamps are not all the way to the corners because I want to make room to come in with some clamps that are going to pinch the joint. But it is important to try to keep these clamps even, that is, parallel to the sides, so that it doesn't pull the assembly out of square. Now before I put any pinching power on here, I want to measure diagonals and make sure that I'm square. So I'm showing 39 and three sixteenths there. And thirty-nine and eight here, so I need to I need to squeeze this in just a little bit. The way I'm going to do that is to just slightly jog a couple of clamps, a little bit of an angle. All right, I think um, I'm good now at uh, 39, 5, 30 seconds each way. So then, so then I want to quickly get some pinching power. 
on these open mortise and tenons. And I've taken the frames out of the clamp and uh, using the table saw, I cut off that extra sixteenth that I said I had added to give me nice uh, flush corners or sides. And now I'm just cleaning up, uh, making sure that there's no mismatch in the overlap at these joints just using the hand plane. Now this is a point where I need to think really carefully so I don't uh, mess it up. What I've got to do is cut the rabbits in the bottom of the top frame for the glass and the strips of wood that will hold the glass. So I've I printed out cross section of this material and with all the dimensions and then uh, you know, went through my my cutter selection to figure out exactly how to do this. So what I'm going to do is, it's a two-step cut. The lowest cut is a quarter inch high and it goes seven sixteenths into the material and that's where the strip that holds the glass is going to, going to sit. The second cut is a half inch high and it only goes three sixteenths into the material and that's where the actual quarter inch plate of glass will sit. So the first cut I'll make is the quarter inch high so that I don't remove my bearing area when it comes time to do the second cut which is the one that's a half inch high. And I'll, I've got a big bearing on here. I'm going to do this in a couple of stages so I don't hog away too much wood and I'm going to try to control the cut as well so I don't go too deep. If I can climb, I'm going to try to climb cut to minimize the tear out. We'll just see how hard that is to do. It looks like I'm able to do a climb cut, at least for the first uh, part of the cut, minimize tear out. Also, I forgot to mention, I'd already scribed with my knife marker a line at the top of the cut to also minimize any chips coming out. And that first cut went pretty well. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to change out the large bearing for the smaller bearing so I can do the rest of the cut. So I'm all set up with a new cutter in here. It's actually a different cutter with a bearing on there. It gives me a sixteenth inch depth. And I've got the height up at a half an inch. I've scribed my line with the knife. Uh, we'll go ahead and make the cut. I cut the rabbet in the bottom frame just like I did for the top, except in the bottom frame it holds a piece of plywood, which is the center of the, of the bottom. Now the last uh, routing step I'm going to do is to do a quarter inch round over on the top edge of the uh, top frame. And so I got all set using a fence here with an opening. Uh, it's, it's a lot safer when you're doing an outside cut to have a fence, so that's what I'm doing. point I'm going to mortise the, uh, the hinges into the top itself and because this top has about a half inch of overhang all around making it look kind of like a tabletop uh, I've got actually mortised the hinge all the way down into the, uh, the wood all the way up through the knuckle so I've marked these hinges for which side is right and left because there is very very slight differences between the two and I've marked the boundaries that correspond to those I'd already mortised into the, to the back get okay, a good line up here and now I will mark the edge of the knuckle and that's how deep my mortise will have to go. And you 
screws in the wheel marking gauge. I can get a good scribe line. And I just clean up up to the lines just using a bench chisel. And there you are. Okay, I've got the, uh, the top screwed in place, the dry screw up here, and uh, now I'm going to set these chains. I've got two of these chains that are designed to hold the top, keep it from going too much past 90 degrees. I want, I want the top to open a little past 90 degrees so it doesn't slam shut on you while you're working on the inside. Maybe 95, something like that. So um, I'd seen a technique before where, I've got a mock up here, where a chain like this was set into a, a groove which would be on the side here and as the top closes the chain would fall down into the groove and basically disappear. So I made this mock up to make sure that my chain would fit into the groove and it does. So now the trick is to get the, the chain set in the proper place so that it will actually fold into the groove. And it took a little bit of trial and error and so forth to, to figure this out, but I've got a little mock up here. This is about where the top bracket will go and the bottom bracket. And I've, I've, I've scabbed on this little piece of wood to represent the bottom of the groove, okay? So the bottom bracket would be about here. So that's about half where the you know where it would hold where it would hold open. And as I shut this, the chain falls down and it doubles back on itself. So I marked a place here that was a little past where the chain falls down. And so if I cut my groove that long and then rat, uh, mortise this fixture in just so that the uh, the base is, is, is mortised in and uh, do that on both sides it should work fine. Okay, to cut this 5 inch long 3 8 inch deep groove I've got my plunge router set with a 5 16 wide bit a plunge depth of 3 8 I'm using a fence I've scabbed a board on here to give me a better seating surface and uh, so what I'll do is I'll just plunge and then uh, guide it on in for the, the five inches. One thing I failed to mention too is uh, it's important to keep uh, track of the bit direction the rotation direction when you're doing this. This bit is rotating like this. So as I pull, as I pull the router towards me, the bit was trying to pull the router up against the fence. You know, pull, pull the router and the fence up against the material. And that gave me a straight line. Had I done it the other way, I would have had to push the router up against the fence, or the fence up against the material. And uh, there's a risk that the router is going to overtake me and actually bump out and uh, put a gouge in the material. So, now the way I'm going to finish the top and bottom frames is with uh, shellac. Actually that's how I'm going to finish the entire piece. But right now I'm doing the top and bottom frames which are cherry. And I use one pound super blonde or blonde shellac. I mix it up uh, from flakes, de-waxed. Um, I used to use half pound cut but I get a little better build obviously with one pound and I'm still able to do the sanding between coats. What The idea here is to put this on, I just have a piece of uh, cotton cloth and you just wipe it on and after it dries you do a little sanding. Now I'll probably put a full two coats on before I sand because the first coat is going to soaked into the wood pretty well. 
but then I'll sand. Now I've sanded these pieces to 400 grit, P400, and I will then hit it with P400 and work my way up to 600 grit. And I'll do enough coats till it feels right. When I used to do the half pound cut, I'd probably do about seven coats. Probably shouldn't take a full seven this time, but it might. It's just got to feel right. It's got to have that nice silky feel. Well, having put some finish on the bottom frame, it's time now to mount the plywood panel that will be in the center. So I've got the frame sitting on a couple of two by blocks so I can get clamps underneath. I'll go ahead and put a little bead of glue around the corner. And then set the panel in, being careful to make sure I've got the orientation correct. There's a little damaged portion on here, but that will go beneath the piece of oak that's going to be mounted. Okay, and then I'll come along with some call, some calls and clamp this in place. I'm making the strips that are going to hold the quarter inch glass into the top. I've cut these, planed them down, got them exactly the right size, they're 7 16 by 1 quarter. And now I'm cutting the miters on the corners. I'm using my well used miter fence. And the reason I use this is to create a zero clearance uh, gap so I don't get any tear out. So I've marked, I've marked my work. It's a simple matter of lining it up on the on the on the curve. And making the cut. Nice clean cut.